Oh hi, I'm Philip from the Flutter team, and this is the third video in Flutter Widgets 101. Previously, you learned about stateless and stateful widgets. In this video, I'll be talking about inherited widget. When your app gets larger and your widget tree gets more complex, passing and accessing data can get cumbersome. If you have four or five widgets nested one after the other, and there's a piece of data you need to get from the top to the bottom, you're adding it to all those constructors and all those build methods. Ugh. I just want to reach up the tree to get that data. Fortunately, there's a widget type that allows just that. It's called inherited widget. When you put this widget in your tree, you can get a reference to it from any widget below it. This is why we call it an inherited widget. Think about a family tree. For example, I inherited my big nose from both my dad and my grandfather. They're both above me in the family tree, so I can inherit from them. So to be clear, this is not inherit as in a class hierarchy, but inherit as in a widget hierarchy. Let's see how we would implement one of those inherited widgets. We'll create a class called inherited nose that extends inherited widget. We need our widget to accept at least one parameter, and that's the child. This is already a valid inherited widget, but it's useless. Let's give it a nose. In this case, the nose will be an image asset of a nose. We'll just add that as a field of the inherited widget. Now any descendant of our inherited nose can get access to it in its build method by calling context.inheritWidget of exact type. By calling this method with the type of your custom inherited widget, you tell Flutter to go up the tree starting from the build context and look for a widget that matches that type. But to make things simpler and more readable, inherited widgets often include a static method called off, which calls the inherit widget of exact type method for you. Now we can rewrite our code in the descendant to read inherited nose dot off context, and that's nice. If this off context business seems familiar, that's because it is used by the Flutter framework itself. For example, you may know that the way to get the global theme of a material app, you do theme.off context. Theme is, in fact, a type of inherited widget. So is scaffold, focus scope, and many others. One thing about the inherited widget is that it is immutable. That is why our image asset is marked as final. You can only replace an inherited widget's field by rebuilding the whole widget. Keep that in mind. Many inherited widgets will stay unchanged for the whole lifecycle of the app, and that's okay. But the fact that something is final only means it cannot be reassigned. It does not mean it cannot change internally. For example, instead of a value, you can attach a service object to the inherited widget. It can be a wrapper around your database, a proxy for your web API, or a provider of assets. The service object can have its own internal state. It can initiate network calls, anything. In our case, no service will provide various nose related services. Each descendant of the inherited nose widget can easily get hold of the service through inherited nose dot off context. It can call methods on it, subscribe to streams, and so on. To summarize, Inherited widget is very neat. It lets you access state from way above in the tree. So in the past three episodes, we've covered three really useful widgets, stateless, stateful, and inherited. Next time, we're going to talk about something very different, but equally important, keys. Also, be sure to head to flutter.io to see all of our widgets.